Hi everyone, this is Tran Bowie live in Roswell. So it has been nearly a week since the coronavirus hit close to home here. And we saw a lot of school closings and the huge impact that it's had on our community. And what we're learning is that we're all trying to navigate our way through this new norm. And joining me now is Mike Thomas, who is the um, owner of Wild Slice Pizzeria and also the co-founder of a really great, what I call a movement, the School Meal Program. So Mike, thanks for joining us. I know it's like eight o'clock, you put the kids to bed, you finish school, how's it going? Yeah, yeah, we're just getting the kids down, enjoying all this time with the family now. Um, haven't had to stress over the shaving for the last <laughs> few, which is nice. Right, I think we're all just like, I think I put on makeup for the first time uh, <laughs> today. So so let's talk about that. I mean, you're, you know, you're a business owner, but you're also a dad. And so yeah. you have had to, your life, your family life is shifting. So how has that been going at home? Yeah, I've got two young kids. Uh, James is three and Sarah is six. Um, we, uh, you know, it's been an adjustment. I think Sarah, understands to some point that things have changed and that we're going to be home for a while and and uh, she's not going to see her school or friends for a bit but um with james i think it's a little bit more difficult for him he um we think he might understand but he's still three so he's he's a lot of like why can't i go back to school or why can't i get out of the house or why can't i go do this and it's just uh you know three-year-old yeah and you know I um but your wife is also a teacher and so she's yeah. not only having to work with the kids at home but she has her own students at, at school yeah she teaches uh at esther jackson um elementary there on the other side of 400 and uh they have a huge adjustment we asked these teachers in a very short time frame to adjust everything that they had to do and to think about their kids and i see every day and every night since she's been home this week she, the effort she puts in is just all day they're on calls they're reaching out to their students um they have conference calls with the principals and their team and and um teachers are great they are busting their butts and i'm so proud of them i'm proud that one is my wife it's great yeah no thank you to all our teachers and administrators yeah. My kids are um, a bit older, so they um, are kind of just managing everything on their own. So I'm not having to do anything until I have to. But every day I see emails coming in from the teachers and administrators. And for something that we did not know what to do, they have really stepped up and helped right. us navigate our way through this. So, all right, let's talk about your business. Um, we are so concerned about the small business owners, um, especially here in Roswell. We yeah. keep about what's happening so how has that impacted the business well I think the first and hardest hit the tip of the spear of those who are being affected is the hospitality and the restaurants the bars the hotels the events the caterers um, we are the first ones to get hit we run on very thin margins um, there's not a lot there and we require the regular business um, to push us through and, and uh, I mean, I've been talking to a lot of restaurant owners here in town who dropped 60, 70, 80 per, per percent overnight. And we have no idea when it's even going to come close to getting back. And it's scary. Well, I, I, I think that there are all these, um, most of the businesses, a lot of them are trying to stay open. They're just yeah. trying to, um, provide a, an atmosphere where you don't have to have as many people and also there's curbside and delivery. Is that right. enough? Is that enough? Uh, no, it's not going to be enough at all. It's not even going to be close, but I think with each owner, they have to evaluate what they're going to do um, as a plan. What's best for them two weeks from now, a month from now, six months from now. And by the end of the year, like, is it best for them to shut down for two weeks come up with a plan, reboot. They have to think about their employees, the labor, the inventory, um, taxes, rent, insurance. I mean, it goes on and on. And uh, for some, it will be the right call and the best call for them to pause and shut down and let us get past this. And then for some, the best will be to truck it through and 
and adjust and adapt their menus and their pickup and their drive through and whatever they can to get the sales that I can to help push it through. And we're grateful for all of them, but um, for some, it's going to be, a, it, they're not going to be able to come back and it's very, very sad. Mm -hmm. and it, it's uh, some, some great ones in our backyard that we truly love to go to. It's going to change our neighborhood. Yeah. So. That's, that's frightening um, because we, we kind of take that for granted, you know, going out to eat and picking up meals and that they're always going to be there. Um, so I want to move on to what you started with your wife, Christy, this week, this cool meal program. Like, yeah. talk about that and why you felt that you needed to start that. Yeah, well, it came from um, those who most know. Uh, we opened up Wild Slice a couple of years ago, and we had a good run, and it went well. And we recently, at the beginning of February, we made the call to shut down that spot. We um, it just didn't work for us. It, it, we we love the brand and we love the idea and the concept, but where we were at just didn't work. So we just finalized that whole process to negotiate out of the lease and and have a plan to try to come back again. Um, in another better spot and almost to the day that we closed out of that and did the final walkthrough with that lease and that landlord um the coronavirus hit us and then very quickly it went straight to um schools are shut down we all need to self-quarantine ourselves the social distancing so important because if we're going to commit to shut down our schools and these kids who aren't going to have the meal program um, are going to miss out on this. This is such a huge commitment. We have to be smart and keep our social distance to make it worth it. And uh, it, 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 it was a, it just my thought was, what was I going to do if I was, if I still had Wild Slice going? What, what would my plan be? And my first thing was like, well, let's put some gift cards because gift cards would put some revenue into the restaurant that day could go into the bank that night when they batch everything out and the cards can be used weeks, months down the road when they feel more safe to go in. So I would be pushing everything I could, please go out. And I have some friends who run some restaurants in town who we talk a lot. We try to give each other advice. And that was things that we were just trying, try, trying to share, like, what could we do now to help out? And then my wife, who was going to school last Friday for the last day, it was a half day for them to plan this break and the plan the virtual learning and how they were going to communicate with her team and students. And on her way into work, she was stressed out that the biggest concern that she had, uh, you know, maybe 60% of her school is on the meal pro program, which provides breakfast and lunch five days a week. Every day that the kids are in school, it provides them lunch. Um, and they were, gonna be out. they were going to be out and definitely in the teachers like they want to help teach their kids and provide the curriculum but what about the food what about right now with food and she left for work at 7 a.m to go plan it all out and i just kind of thought what could i do what could i do and then we spoke about 10 a.m after she got out of her meetings and i'm like what do you think about this and she helped me bounce off the idea and she's like it's good and she helped me kind of refine it and then from there is like, let's make some calls. Let's see what we can do. What would it take to get it done? So let's talk about that program. So the school meal program, there's actually a Facebook page and we'll put a link um, on this post so you can join. So Mike, walk us through the process. We, as consumers, buy a gift card to various restaurants and then what happens? The whole idea is for the restaurants to sell their gift cards and maintain the revenue that they hold on their current food margins and take that amount along with their expertise of providing good healthy food and take that good food cost and apply it to the meals to feed the kids. So the whole idea is what we have to do is, I knew we had to kind of create a network of those in Roswell who wanted to help these kids. All you see all over the Facebook page, Instagram, Twitter, like what could I do to help? Who? You know, who needs what? How can we get food? So it just had to be organized. Um, so the first thing I did was I reached out to Lindsay Coates, who is the PTA president for Vickery Mill. Um, I work with her a lot with Wild Slice. Um, they were very close to us. She was affected. So I actually reached out to her prior to Esther Jackson, which is my wife's school, because I knew right away she had the heart and the idea and the 
um, ability to kind of turn my my idea into okay, yes, we could get this done. So I uh, reached out to her early in the morning and said, hey, if we did this, I, if I could organize the residents to buy gift cards at these participating restaurants and they agree to allow us to donate to the meal program, can you find anyone to pick it up and do you knew like do you know how to get it to the kids because the first thought was we were going to work with the schools the principal to help find out how to get it to these kids um unfortunately though the county for reasons they have for liability they have to distance themselves as the employees and teachers who are going to provide the meals they have their own program and they have to stick to that so all that we are doing is just caring parents who want to do what we can to help and that's the time of it so okay that's, so that's kind of going. in such a short time i'm going to show our viewers this is what has been happening um talk about what we're seeing here people are just showing up purchasing Lindsay. deliveries that's Lindsay. awesome um so she made a delivery and then we have um who's this who's this and this is another pizza. Um, yeah, that's Daniel at Johnny's. Um, that was great. He took 50 pizzas up to a hotel tonight that serviced Esther Jackson families. Um, and we let him know it was there and he had a chance to get all the kids, you know, and see all the kids. And um, there's Amy Gates there. She she, she was great enough to um, take some to a, uh, that was from the earth brewing. Um, I think that was some turkey sandwiches that she was able to take out some fruit. and. Um, yeah, and, and, I mean, everyone's just been great. That's at a different hotel in town. And the, um, we so we launched this pretty much on Tuesday night. And what's today? Thursday, right? No, I forget the that. days. Um, I think it's, it's only been a few days, but that's it's amazing. Thursday, yeah. Um, in that few days, I haven't heard, heard. So the deal that we did with the restaurants, because it is just as important for the industry to generate. The revenue we want them to use it as gift card sales so it's we get to feed the kids but we also get to help our favorite spots stay alive and keep their employees paid so um i'm asking them to not share their sales but to share the amount of meals that they mm -hmm. provide and by all means these restaurant owners who are on board are sharing more than they need to but we are well over three four hundred meals served in just a few days I know one place did share that they're at over fifteen hundred dollars in gift card in just two days to support this program here. Right now, we've currently got four, five. We just got a sixth restaurant on board, and I think I'm going to be able to announce another. Um, I'm going to do it right now. Talk of the Town Catering just got on board too. Um, they're providing some wonderful. Uh, meal options for you to come and pick up or they're delivering as well straight to to your home which is great but andrew there just agreed um we're just going to announce them live on that group page on facebook once he gets his um he's going to update his link uh to specify that these gift card sales are going to go directly to the program so how that's many, yeah many, i'm sorry how many restaurants so far I don't want to get it wrong. I believe that gets us to seven. Um, we have um, we have two other restaurants who did commit to close for two weeks, but they did commit to open back up on a certain date and said that they will jump on the to the program at that time. And then I've got two other spots um, who we're just trying to work out the final details to make sure it works for them. And we will add them too. But what I've learned is that uh, our growth with this program comes from being able to add more restaurants and then as their base as their regulars and as their fans see what they're doing they provide additional support and gift card sales for them for the restaurant which then will provide more more for the kids so um our goal right now is to get as many restaurants as we can so we could support because this is going to be weeks on end at least um that's a lot of meals Okay, so watching out there, Mike is looking for more restaurants Please. Um, and also more of us who will just go and spend our money buying uh -huh. these gift cards because it's actually helping some of the most vulnerable, you know, people in our community, these children who rely on free and reduced meals. Like we forget that 
they go to school that's where they get their meals yeah. and when school's not in session many of them go hungry and that's just really not fair um, there's a lot there's hundreds of kids in every school every day um blows your mind but there's hundreds of kids just right here in our backyard in roswell um and their parents are a lot of them or their guardians are the ones who are working a lot of the hourly jobs that are in the service industry right. that are being affected right now um they work at these restaurants and hotels and um just i don't know uh, baffling. you know mike i know this is this is such a trying time such uncertain times how do you feel about the impact that you're making because it seems like such a small gesture but it's pretty big to me and just Thank you. just it on Facebook. I'm, I'm like so proud to, to know you and know that you're a part of this community. So thank, thank you. you. So um, well, that makes me blush. Thank you. But um, I don't have a horse in the race here. We close up our restaurant, right? Um, the only thing I did was I, I I just saw, you know, I like I like to solve problems. That's what I do. I just my mind thinks that way. Like, what could we do? And and the idea came, and it came on so strong that it's. It, it, it was well this just has to be done like this is the time that it has to be done and the weird coincidence that i actually closed my restaurant down right before this happened truly believe that that's what allowed me to put all the effort into this because i've got time my stress of what i'm going to do with my place wasn't the same that a lot that all these other owners are going through um but i knew exactly i just gone through it it was still very fresh so i know and i lived it very fresh so for me it was it it was just took a few phone calls and let's see what we could do and then the momentum grew and then now it just becomes a passion and let's wow. see how much we could do because that's what's going to make change well a lot of us have ideas a lot of us want to help but very few people step up so thank you for stepping up of course um, so let's wrap up with what's next for you uh well more schools um we're gonna announce here i think one to two more schools in the next day which will be great to add more restaurants as well because once we add those schools those relationships with those schools will hopefully want to connect and help out those kids so that's what we're going to do here in the next few days but i think what the page is going to grow through uh, um or what it's going to grow into organically is just kind of like a hub for the community to get together specifically when it involves supporting the restaurants and the industry and how that can affect our kids in school it's going to start with that but if it grows into an organic spot where we could come together and all work we've got wonderful work through our volunteers um who uh lindsey coates and rachel lee they both have done um for vickery mill it's lindsey and for Rachel to Esther Jackson. Um, they've done like they're the ones that are getting this done. I'm just at home on the phone doing some emails, but they're the ones who are organizing the volunteers on our page. We have a sign up genie for anyone who wants to try to plan yeah, yeah. when they would be available. It's not a guarantee that we'll have food to be picked up during that time of that day. But if we do, and the more restaurants that we have, the more prepared we are with volunteers. So Rachel is doing everything with there. She's organizing what it actually takes to get it from the restaurant to the kids. And so Lindsay and Rachel are huge and I'm grateful to them and and um, to oh, see what your, we can do and help this grow. And they'll help the new PTA parents who um, are gonna get involved with it. So um, we're just excited to see what's gonna come of this right now. And then the question is, what's the industry gonna look like after the, this? I don't think anyone has an idea other than we know it's going to look different. Yeah. For you, so what would plans are just to see what it looks like and go from there and do the best to serve. Do you have a plan for your business? Um, well, prior to all this, of course, yeah, we had plans for Wild Slice to, um, we're going to launch a food truck this summer um, yeah. and stick around the community and do everything we can um, to work with all of our great guests and customers that we had before. And then that was going to work into um a new brick and mortar for us um definitely staying here in roswell because that's where we are that's where we work that's where we live um and uh uh go from there but now with this like we'll we'll just see um 
what I do have is I have time and I have experience. And um, right now we have this network that we're building. So if there are any restaurant owners out there that want any connection, support, advice, my time, like I'm here. I've got a lot of time now, so I'm here. In between the in between the homework and schoolwork, right? Uh, yeah. Thank <laughs> you for my wife. She's a because she's a teacher. She's teaching the kids. She's got schoolwork set up. She's got a classroom for them. Um, thank God for her. Yeah, I just give her breaks when she needs them with her with their calls. But um, <laughs> thank my wife for sure. She's amazing. Uh, well, you enjoy the rest of the night. Hopefully, it's some downtime. Thank you so much for joining us, and thank you so much for sharing this. Thank you for all you do. All right, thanks, Jim. Bye, guys. Bye.